Welcome everyone. This is the account with the report for day 405 of the war in Ukraine. Thank you for joining me. Sorry that there was no report yesterday. I fell asleep last night after spending a little time with the family. Here is the report for yesterday. I took out the articles that are no longer up to date, like the flashpoints along the front, the general stuff update and others like that. The rest is grouped into the usual situation inside Ukraine, the occupied territories, Russia and Belarus, and international developments. And to start the new segment, the updates on Russia's drone attack on Odessa. On April 4th overnight, Russia launched a Shahed UAV attack on the city of Odessa and the surrounding areas. Explosions were reported in the city before the air raid warning was issued. Reports vary, but it is reported that Ukrainian defenders shot down 13 or 14 Shahed drones during the attack. How many drones were launched was not disclosed. One enterprise was hit, causing a fire. Now for updates on the assassination of Vladlen Tatarsky. The Russian investigative committee accused Daria Trepova, a suspect in the case of the murder of Russian propagandist Vladlen Tatarsky, of committing a terrorist act. Russian sources claim that Trepova admitted during the interrogation that she was promised a position as editor of one of Ukraine's media outlets should she hand over the bust suspected of containing the explosive device. Andriy Yusov, official representative of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine, stated during a television appearance that the responsibility for the death of Tatarsky lies with the Russian President Vladimir Putin as he killed Tatarsky when the order to invade Ukraine was given. Meanwhile, the National Republican Army has claimed responsibility for arranging the murder of propagandist Vladlen Tatarsky. Moving on to the flood in Kramatorsk. A breach in a dam caused widespread flooding in the city of Kramatorsk in Donetsk Oblast. 260 private houses on 30 streets were flooded. Evacuation operations are underway, with at least five people already rescued and 17 evacuated. And as I'm skipping the flashpoints for this report, a quick individual update on Bakhmut. Seri Cherevati, the spokesman for the Eastern Grouping of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, confirmed claims that Yevgeny Prigozhin hoisted the Wagner PMC's flag on the building of the city administration of Bakhmut. Cherevati noted, however, that the building was already destroyed during fighting long ago. Meanwhile, Ukraine's Special Operations Forces reported that the ammunition shortage that plagued Wagner around Bakhmut has been resolved and attacks have doubled. And now for an interesting article I wanted to point out, titled New weapons aren't enough. The challenges of Ukraine's coming assault. This interesting article by the New York Times takes a look at the issues faced by the Ukrainian military. Thanks to Western weapons and newly created assault units, Ukraine is getting ready for a decisive spring counteroffensive, but the challenge will be to overcome casualties and keep war-weary troops motivated. I found this article very interesting and would like you to check it out. Now another article I wanted to highlight, titled A web of trenches show Russia fears losing Crimea. Russia has started to prepare the annexed Crimea for a Ukrainian counteroffensive, with the occupiers building a complete web of trenches and fortifications on the peninsula in just a few weeks. This article was published by the Washington Post with reference to Maxa satellite images. It is quite informative, so please consider checking it out. And now for the investigative stories from Ukraine by the Kiev Independent. The Investigative Stories from Ukraine is a weekly newsletter highlighting the most prominent investigations. Slitstvo.info journalists help abducted teenagers flee from Russian captivity. Journalists identify tech company developing cyber attack software for Russian government. Four bankers convicted of helping hide Putin's fortune in Swiss accounts following Panama Papers expose. A look at all the minor updates out of Ukraine. Prime Minister Denis Shmyal stated that Ukraine needs 37.4 billion US dollars to carry out humanitarian mine clearance in the country. 
Forty defenders of Snake Island have already been returned from Russian captivity, according to Ukrainian Parliament Commissioner for Human Rights Dmitry Lubinets. The Ukrainian Foreign Affairs Minister Dmitry Koleba said at a briefing that NATO partners agreed to increase financial aid to Ukraine while also speeding up supplies of weapons. Next up, the latest regarding the situation in the occupied territories. According to Alexei Dmitryshkivsky, head of the United Press Center of the Defense Forces of the Tavria Front, Russia has started to move equipment and ammunition out of the occupied city of Mariupol due to logistical issues. Moving on to the news updates from Russia and Belarus. Maria Levova Belova, the Russian President's Commissioner for Children's Rights, proudly reported that Russian security services at the Belarusian border managed to stop and detain a child from Mariupol who tried to return to Ukraine. Yuri Inat, spokesman for the Air Force of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, reported that Russia continues to deploy aircraft to drop up to 20 guided bombs on frontline areas and positions in Ukraine each day. Sergei Shoigu, the Russian Minister of Defense, claimed that Belarus already has at its disposal assault aircraft and Iskander-M missile systems capable of delivering nuclear strikes. And to wrap up the news segment, the international developments. Finland has become the 31st member of NATO. The US Department of Defense announced another package of military aid to Ukraine worth 2.6 billion US dollars. Former US President Bill Clinton said in an interview that he regrets persuading Ukraine to give up its nuclear arsenal in 1994. In an interview with the European Pravda, the head of the US State Department under Donald Trump, Mike Pompeo, considers the current U.S. administration's effort to support Ukraine in the war against Russia to be insufficient. And now for a quick summary for the intelligence reports, starting with the UK Ministry of Defense. The UK defense intelligence suggests that Russia is likely working on the creation of new private military companies, PMCs, that could become an alternative to the Wagner Group PMC in the war against Ukraine. A look at the latest assessment by the Institute for the Study of War. The main headlines of the assessment are Wagner Group fighters made further advances in central Bakhmut and seized the Bakhmut city administration building on the night of April 2nd. Russian authorities are blaming Ukrainian government entities and Russian opposition figure Alexei Navalny for the April 2nd assassination of Russian mill blogger Maxim Fomin, also known as Vladlen Tatarsky. Official Russian responses to Fomin's death failed to generate a single narrative in the information space and led to disjointed responses from prominent pro war voices. As Russian officials try to galvanize an official narrative around the National Anti Terrorism Committee's investigation, Russian mill bloggers will likely increasingly criticize the results and conclusions of the investigation and Fomin's death is likely to become a major point of information space neuralgia. Russian security services reportedly continue to confiscate the passports of senior officials and state company executives to limit flight from Russia. And that concludes the report. If you are interested in any of the articles and want to read up on the details, you can find links to them in the description as usual. If you enjoyed the report and found it informative, please consider sharing it with others and giving me a like. Thank you for joining me and have a great day. You are listening to The Account. Slava Ukraini!